Welcome back to the Crow's Nest, everyone. You're home for Sea of Thieves news. My name's Jay, and today I'm joined by a special pirate. I'm here with Rare developer Mike Chapman, design director, live at New York Comic Con. He just wrapped up his panel, and now it's time for an interview. So with that said, let's dive right in. Before we go too far, Mike, uh, for those pirates who are on the fence about the game, could you speak to what the game is? What is Sea of Thieves? Oh, thank you, Jay. It's a great question. It's quite an easy one as well, actually, that one. Um, so... I would say Sea of Thieves is the pirate game you've always wanted. So if you grew up and you saw Treasure Island, even the Muppet variation, or you read Treasure Island, um, you kind of saw all those pirate movies, read those pirate books, you, you want to live out that pirate fantasy, we made Sea of Thieves for you. It's the pirate game, that pirate fantasy, being out there, having adventures, but doing it with your friends. So being in this pirate world, having these fantastic adventures, sailing ships together, having these unexpected encounters out there in the world. Sea of Thieves is this adventure game that you can get lost in. And we, we made the game for people who want to have that experience. I might be a little bit biased, but that is 100% true. <laughs> is it 100% true? <laughs> All right, let's talk about Tall Tales. That's, that was one of the topics for the panel tonight, so we're going to dive heavily into that. It says, the Tall Tales have introduced players to new mechanics such as traps, constellations, and more. Will future Tall Tales bring about new ways to play and interact within the world? Hypothetically speaking, what would something like this look like? Hypothetically speaking. That is a great question again. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that was very deliberate to make the Tall Tales feel different, not only in terms of delivering story in like a more authored story but do it in a Sea of Thieves way through the quest book. We also wanted those tall tales to showcase new quest mechanics. Part of the motivation for that was to make each tall tale feel different and have its own personality and, and also just investing in new quest mechanics and we really want to bring some of those mechanics to voyages soon. Uh, it's quite it's a lengthy process because it's got to sit across all the progression levels but that's something that we want to do. And Absolutely, in the future you'll see uh, future tall tales that we've you know we've always been clear that we want to do. We've got this platform now to deliver these types of stories. We'll want to build new tall tales that showcase different mechanics and so many ways we could do that. Um, extension of existing tools that the players has, but also new areas, new challenges, new environmental kind of interactivity. So. Um, I guess one example we'd be to give is the traps that we release. We release kind of a set of traps and we'll want to expand those and because that gives us the ability to make the islands feel more interactive. So you're definitely going to be seeing more of that in the future. Awesome. I, I'm sure many players are excited for that, as am I. Speaking of the Tall Tales, they were introduced as part of the anniversary update, um, which brought multiple uh, lore-driven narratives to the game. Uh, it's no secret that new Tall Tales are on the way. Will the release of these future chapters come out all at once, or will it be a more episodic approach? Another great question. Um, I mean, we toyed with um, many ways that we could release the Tall Tales. I mean, for the anniversary edition, we settled on the idea of, as, as I said on the panel, it, the Shores of Gold story was the closest parallel to like our main campaign, so we deliberately wanted to release them in one go. Uh, nine stories felt like the right number in terms of telecohesive narrative. In the future, I mean, we're, we're not limited by the nine, so we might do smaller tail arcs. Could be three, could be four, could be five, could be more, could be more than nine. Um, I, mean, I mean, we don't we don't want to kind of fit to a, a to, to a like a very a rigid structure. Um, one of the things we've been trying to to kind of kind of plan behind the scenes since anniversary is trying to get the tools in a place where we can make them uh, faster and more regular. And there's a big opportunity there for us in terms of telling a story, like we've already put clues in the world that we want to pay off with the next set of tall tales. But what we don't want to do is say we're going to do episodic and then have these massive gaps between the tales. We've, it's got to be regular. If we're going to build in things like cliffhangers and twists and all that stuff that sounds like it could bring a lot to the game, we want to make it raw regular. So we feel like we've got a good plan in place, but the, the next set of tales you'll, you'll see released in kind of a more episodic format. I mean, we're trying to work out what the kind of the, the rhythm of how often you're going to get them, but we certainly don't want long gaps between the releases. Oh, that's perfect. Um, and that's something that people will definitely look forward to, for sure. Just like the last question, myself included. <laughs> All right. Speaking of future releases, we've seen a few characters from the expanded world make their way into the game. Can we, make, uh, can we expect more of this or vice versa? They make their way out of the game into the expanded universe. Yes, definitely. Um, really kind of passionate about the fact that all of our expanded kind of universe characters, it's all canon. Even if we're planning a comic book series or, or future novels, it all has to fit into the law we've established in game. And, and as well as the law that 
we, we're confident we're going to build and then in the kind of coming years it's all got to kind of fit into that so every time we start a new kind of EU project we always look at firstly what's the right fit for a character in game that we could explore further in the expanded universe or vice versa when we think about tall tales uh, are there characters in the world we can celebrate with a story we, so players can understand more about why they're in the world but also are there any characters in the EU that we can bring into game so we really start there first before we consider creating brand new characters and we'll still do that but um, yes you're going to see that going both ways absolutely. It's awesome. It's very exciting. And this last question is for fun. This is all and anything goes. Anything goes for this one. It says, if you could create any character within the world of Sea of Thieves with no limits to archetypes or any type of restriction in place, what would this individual look like for you? So it's quite easy to answer, actually, that one. I, I when I was growing up, the stuff I mentioned earlier, like Treasure Island and you know, Peter Pan and Hook, I just, I, love, I just loved all of those pirate tropes, like ev every kind of element of it. And and I think even before Sea of Thieves became Sea of Thieves and we made this game, I, like, I think even for me, myself, I, like, as a player of games, like I, there wasn't really that pirate game that really scratched that itch. So like, I'm so proud that we've made a game like Sea of Thieves. I, I, I enjoy playing as much as I do making it. Like It's an absolute pleasure. So for that question, I'd probably say I'd, I'd love to get as close to Captain Hook as possible. I think for me, Captain Hook, like, especially the Disney version, that classic kind of red coat with a filigree and just the exaggerated proportions and absolutely just yeah. the absolute charm and the character of, of Captain Hook. I think like he could be at home at Sea of Thieves. I'd love to have him in the game. That's not confirming anything. Absolutely. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's, that's, that's dream territory. Absolutely. That's absolutely dream territory. That's just for fun. Yeah. But that, that about does it for me. Thank you, Mike, again, once again, for sitting down with me. I know it's been a long day for all of us here at New York Comic Con. Um, and for you guys at home, if you want more Sea of Thieves, be sure to hit that like button, subscribe, and hit that bell notification to stay up to date with the channel. As always, my name's Jay, and until next time, fair winds and following seas.